All right, everybody, thanks for checking out our second tutorial uh, in regards to Cinema Pro Cams. And what we're going to get into in this tutorial is actually creating Pro Cams cameras and how they operate. And we have a uh, space scene here where we built a pretty cool uh, cannon gun thing. And that we're actually, this is a, a test game we're building for Cinema Director. But uh, we do have uh, some catwalks and all sorts of cool stuff in here. And we're inside the Unity Space Construction Kit that's available on the Asset Store. That's what the, uh, we're using for the Skybox. So we think it's pretty cool, so check it out if you get a chance. So just a little plug for, uh, for those guys. So the first thing I want to do is create a camera. And we do that by going to Window, Cinema Suite, uh, Pro Cams, and then Create a Pro Cam. And we're going to have a nice little dialog box pop up here. And the first thing I want to do is give it a name. So I'm just going to call this an Establishing camera and then I want to get into actually configuring what the camera looks like so uh, down at the bottom we can actually show preview and when we do that it's going to show exactly what we see in our scene window so no matter how I move around in the scene if I click back on the preview you can see that the preview automatically updates depending on where I'm looking which is a nice feature right out of the box so uh, the next thing we can do is actually pick the film format or aspect ratio that we want the camera to be. And we have choices from full aperture, which is your standard TV, and we can, we can resize the window and the preview will get larger and smaller. So we can go from full aperture, uh, we can get 16.9, which is kind of your standard digital format. We can go all the way up to anamorphic, which is the resolution you'd see in some of the major feature films. I'll stick to 16.9 and then we have the option of actually determining if what resolution we want the camera to be in in our game window so we have built in the option to have 2k or 4k so if you have a 2k or 4k monitor and you have your game window open on that monitor you could actually reflect exactly what that camera is going to see I'll just leave it on standard for now We've also given the option to attach to a rig. So if you have an object inside of Unity that you want to attach the camera to, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll take a look at that later. We do have some cranes and dollies and that kind of thing that we've uh, included with Cinema Pro Cam. If you do want to fool around with what kind of results you get when you attach a camera to a constrained rig. The lens kit that we use uh, for all of our calculations is the Cook S4i. T2 lens kit and we have lenses ranging from 12 millimeters all the way to 180 millimeters and we have spent a lot of uh, research time on actually getting those real world constraints directly into Unity. Future versions of Cinema Pro cams will probably add Zeiss lenses, maybe Panavision lenses. Uh, that's something that we're looking at in the future so keep that in mind. When you choose a lens there's two values that are shown. They're read-only. They're only for reference purposes. But we have the nodal point offset, which is the distance of the lens from a camera body. We also have the horizontal field of view for that particular lens. And the 12 millimeter lenses, which is like a wide angle lens, it has a wide field of view of almost 75 degrees. And as we change lens sizes, you'll see that the field of view becomes much, much more narrow and the offset value will change. Those Again, those numbers are just for reference purposes only. Now you'll notice that everything in the picture so far is blurry and uh, that's by design because we actually have a very small aperture setting for the lens. But what you can see is as I change aperture setting or f-stop value, you'll notice that it's being reflected in the preview of what the camera is actually going to see. The other thing I can adjust is the distance that the camera is going to focus to the subject. And uh, this is known as the focal point. So way down here we have a female uh, and she's in an elevator and it's pretty far away. So say we have a distance of about 100 feet over, over to that female. And now when I uh, change the, change the uh, field of view, it will reflect accordingly. And once I've selected my settings and I'm happy with everything I'm just gonna go ahead and hit create and when I hit create the camera is placed inside of the unity project so for now I'm just gonna close the create pro cam window 
and as I scroll you now see there's my ProCams camera and it's directed down at where I was aiming. Now if I do select that camera and again we called it establishing camera you can actually see some other values appear and we like to call these and we talked about this in the, our first tutorial but we like to call these gizmo lines. The outer white lines show the field of view of the camera or that that horizontal FOV value. The blue rectangle with the 11 foot 8 inch mark is the near limit of your depth of field and in this case because we're so far away and the subject is so far away there we do not have a far depth of field and actually if you look or a far limit depth of field and if you look that value right now is set as infinite now you'll notice when I select the camera that we carry a lot of information inside of the unity inspector and we can change and refine our camera right inside of of this area inside of unity and there's actually a lot of really nice options here for you to take a look at so again it's very similar a lot of it is very similar to when you create a camera you can change the name of the camera you can decide to now change the uh, film format and a little note about film format and again we talked about it in the first tutorial is make sure that you have your game window always set on standalone uh, so that cinema pro cams can establish the resolution that's being displayed for the game window so just keep that in mind but again as we change aperture it's going to reflect uh, sorry as we change film format it's going to reflect inside the game window so I'm just going to put that back at 16.9 and you can actually see the gizmo lines of the camera change as I do that. Now let's take a look at some of the effects that take place when we change the lens. We know that we want to actually focus on the girl that's down here in the elevator and we have some options to do that. Down here I have something called click subject to focus and when I enable that I can actually click on the female girl in the elevator and the camera will actually now focus on her and I was actually a little off in my original estimate she's actually 313 feet away from from the camera now this yellow line this yellow gizmo line that is showing you the focal length of the camera and it's reflected by this yellow rectangle and I'm gonna go ahead and make the game view bigger and by selecting her as the subject you can now see that her area of the camera is now in focus and there's a gradual depth of field fall off or a focus fall off that takes place outside of this near focal point. So what happens if I really want to zoom in on her? Say I do something like 135 millimeters and when I do I can just use standard unity tools to kind of adjust where the camera is looking and it'll reflect in my preview. And now I'm using a very very long uh, lens to actually look at the subject and by using a very long lens the the field of view gets very narrow and in turn the depth of field gets narrow as well so you can see that the girl is in focus but the elevator around her is not so by playing with different distances of lenses and aperture values you can achieve some really really nice effects when it comes to depth of field. I'm going to open a new project so we can check out some more depth of field examples as well as talk about different ways that you can focus on objects using Cinema Pro Camps. So in this example I've opened a scene that has a convenience store and a gas station and a car and I'm just going to use this to kind of show the uh, some of the examples of how depth of field works with Cinema Pro Camps and get a little bit more depth into how the camera focuses and we'll concentrate on the objects that are inside of this scene as I think the way that this scene is configured provides a pretty good example of of how to show the camera working. What I've done here is I've created a camera called Dasti Gas Station Camera 
uh, and I've used a pretty long lens of 65 millimeters because I want to have a narrow field of view so that I can show some of the effects of focusing the camera mixed with aperture settings. Um, everything is blurry right now because the distance I have set to the subject is only three feet. But we have a few different options available to us for how to focus the camera. And the first option is drag and drop to focus. And what I can do is go inside of my hierarchy and I can actually just select an object, uh, which in this case I'll select this ga gas pump and I'll drag it to this field and you'll see the camera, the camera's focal point has now changed to that gas tank. And by using a low aperture of 1.4, it's got a relatively narrow depth of field, so really the only thing that's in focus is that gas tank, and you see the store and the car are not. And the car is actually a little bit less out of focus than the store. If I drag the other gas pump, you'll see a very minor effect where now the first gas pump has gone slightly out of focus, and the second one is in focus. And if I do the electrical wire line, which is, which is this guy here, and drag that over, you can see now that the light in the front is perfectly in focus, the gas tank is slightly out of focus, as well as the rest of the scene. So it's a pretty handy tool if you have trouble actually clicking the subject to focus, which is another option that we have. You can actually go right inside of your Unity project and narrow down exactly the object that you want to focus on. So again, the next uh, way to focus the camera is clicking the subject to focus. So if I have that selected, I can just click different objects in the scene and the focal point of the camera will automatically change. So I click the gas tank, click the back of the car, and now you can see the car is in focus and everything else is not, and so on and so forth. Click the light, and the light is in focus, and that sort of thing. Or maybe even focus on this light here, and you can see now the, the store front is in focus and everything else is not. So it's a very, very handy tool. Now if we add the option to center on that subject, when I click the car, the camera will actually center on that object as well as focus on it. So the gas tank, car, the light on the store, the other gas tank, so on and so forth. So it's actually another handy tool that you can use if you really want to narrow in on focusing on a certain point. So I'll continue to stay focused on the gas tank and what I want to do is just kind of go over a couple of the different aperture settings. So you can see right now it's a pretty narrow aperture. If I change it to say an aperture of 5.6 you can now see that all of the gas tank is in focus. The back of the car is now in focus. The store is not. And you can see that just the front of the car is now outside of that far limit of the depth of field that the camera is seeing. So we have a near field of 22 feet and a far of 39. So everything in this range is now in focus. And if I change my object that I'm focusing on, then you're going to see that those values change. So as I focus on the back of the car, the depth of field has gotten wider because my focal point is actually now closer. So all of the, again, all of those tools are built in to Cinema Pro cams and they behave depending on the lens that's been selected. And you can do different things such as um, if I want a very narrow field of view focusing on the gas tank and I want to kind of have a different depth of field effect, as we were talking about earlier, I could you know, move the camera much farther away and I could use a longer lens to kind of get the desired effect that I want and by using an even longer lens it really narrows down the depth of field. Now I've got some, I've got some grass in the way there but you can get a pretty nice effect that if I focus on the gas tank now we have some nice foreground grass that's close to the camera but we're still focusing on uh, the gas tank area and you can see that the depth of field is even slightly narrower and I can continue to adjust those aperture values until I get that desired effect. So you can see now 
the grass is still out of focus, but the car is in focus, the lights in focus, the gas tanks are in focus, and that changes depending on my aperture settings. So that concludes this tutorial on more advanced camera features. Thanks for checking it out. In our final tutorial, we're going to take a look at using the Steadicam feature, which will add motion to your camera. And we're also going to take an in-depth look at creating stereoscopic cameras using Cinema Pro Cams. Thanks for watching.